what's up? So, all right, we got someone from uh, someone from China. Sweet, 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 sweet. You guys are from all over. I dig that. Um, the first thing that I want to say, the first thing I want to get into, someone had had asked me about uh, cord pressure. Oh, Pakistan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, someone had asked me about cord pressure, and it, it th that's a great question. I don't think I would normally have have gotten into it. I, I have taught it to a private student before, but. The, there is a little bit of a disconnect when we talk about chord pressure and what that chord pressure is and why it can be so difficult to play is we think because we're adding more fingers into what it is that we're playing that it's going to be harder. Uh, and that is not necessarily the case, all right? Now it is more difficult because you can't, uh, it's like your fingers don't have their own brains. So yes, you are thinking of, 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 of three, uh, three different things for a G chord. But what you're not doing is multiplying the pressure by three. That's what really tends to happen. So if you do this, if you have your G chord and you just take those notes, three on the top string, two on the, on the fifth string, and then three in the bottom, just play them by themselves. And play them as lightly as you can. It's a little out of tune, boop. Red, feel, feel the pressure. And then you'll realize it doesn't really take too much pressure to, uh, to play those, so you just play them together. Now, d d that becomes a little bit difficult, but that is what you can practice getting very, very in-depth, very, very detailed, and very, very slow to eventually move and go from chord to chord. Same with here. You know, if you got, you got your, your, your C chord, that three, that two, that one. And when, when you're doing it, I want you to like go as light till it almost, till it almost cuts out, right? And then put them all together. All right, now it will get difficult when you're when you're kind of going back and forth, but that at least will get your mind away from uh, from thinking that you have to like squeeze, squeeze super hard because you're not just playing one note at a time. Uh, so that was the first question. The, another one that I, I I got that I do I do want to bring up, but um, uh, but I don't think I don't think I'm going to do it in a live just because it might be a little too much. Uh, is how to play and switch different modes in and out. Um, so uh, that that is a is a tutorial that I'm coming up with pretty soon uh, that that I'll be releasing. So um, so that might not be for the for the live class, but it's gonna go through all of the modes, all of the scales, even um, even from uh, uh, from the modes harmonic minor, pentatonics, and stuff like that. So cool. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to throw out? Uh, you guys that are blowing up the, uh, just try to, it's going to be difficult if you guys are like just throwing a whole bunch of, uh, of crap out there. Um, like, uh, Muji drugs though. I don't, I don't know what that means. Um, and then somebody else is just typing in another language. I welcome you guys all. That's great. Uh, but the more you flood, the the chat with whatever that is <laughs> the less uh if somebody does ask a question that i can get to so um so uh to be honest that's actually like really annoying so if you it says i love you china or i love you whatever that's great um uh but uh it's like super super annoying if you guys are just kind of like flooding it and not asking guitar questions because if somebody does sip it through i have to oh arpeggios yes that's right that was uh that was the last one Mm. Dude, we can do, oh yeah, and, and uh, I like that because at the end, it, I didn't have enough time yesterday to get into arpeggios because there's a lot, but let, let's get into some of them. Um, the arpeggios, when you're, when you're doing them, don't, uh, don't just assume, like if I do, if I do a, a um, if I do a, a G arpeggio, uh, all right, hey guys, just w one more time, aria or, uh, uh, and and then ABS not hot. Can you guys not like? It, this isn't um, 
like a request. I'm not going to play the national anthem or Christmas songs. Uh, and then, you know, you're anti I don't know. I don't know what that is, but you're just, you're flooding the, the, the chat with stuff that has nothing to do with this. Um, so when you're doing the arpeggios, you, you want to make sure that you're going in order. So if you, if you know the number system, right, if I just take my G major, all right, and I just play, right, that's not really an arpeggio, um, uh, technically. That's not the arpeggio that we're looking for. What you want to do is you want to go in order. So what I mean by that is one, three, five, one, three, five, one, right? In that order, just, just, just right through, just right through the numbers. No, it's okay guys, you guys, I'm glad that you guys are chatting, but just, there's so many things happening and I'm, I'm trying to explain something and read at the same time, so it just gets, it just gets hard. So, if I just take this power chord, this bar chord, and, and uh, I have already, those, those, those notes skip. And what I mean by that is that's a one, and then a five, and then a one, and then a three, five, one. That's kind of like the order, the makeup of that bar chord, the bar chord that we all know. So start going through, right, and say, uh, okay, cool. I'm gonna make sure that it goes in the, in, the, in the correct order. My major bar chord, as you guys know, or my major chord is a one, a three, and a five. For you guys that do know that, really quickly, if you guys don't, it's, it's, just, taking, um, it's just taking the one, the one note, the three note, and the five note from your major scale. So if you guys play that major scale, right, if you just take the one note, the three note, and the five note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, right, that's what makes up your, your, your chords. So let's go through just the first position arpeggios. Um, if I have the actual order, instead of just this bar chord, you can use this bar chord, right? This major bar chord as kind of a keep, right? Because it's gonna follow almost the whole, the whole time, right? So you've got one, three, five. So you're kind of doing like third fret, and then the next string, second, fifth fret, and then the next string, fifth fret. And that's how I like to split it up, right? Kind of doing three strings and then three strings. So you have this. And then the next three strings will be four, three, three. Right? And you can see that bar chord's right there. Actually, the only note that we're really adding in is the second of, uh, of the fifth string. So now you have... Now, what's great about that form is if I want to make this minor, you take this two down to a one or up to a, I, I like to take it up to a, to a six here. So let's just do the minor form. We did major, we're gonna do minor form in first position. One, six, or I'm sorry, three, six, five, five, and then three, three, three. Now, when it starts getting a little bit more uh, creative is is being able to move those arpeggios up. So what I mean by that is if I take that that G major now instead of starting on the third fret, I'm gonna start on the seventh fret up here, which was my third, and doing uh let's see. And then up here Right, and you're just kind of moving the same grouping of notes up and up as as a kind of um, as a kind of form. So so there, I would say getting a chart for those arpeggios and really getting those down and being able to move them up and down it would be um, it would be like the most the most beneficial uh, and knowing what notes change from a minor uh, from a major to a minor. Um, yeah, Mika, the G minor chord, it's, it's interesting because the G major obviously is just almost, it's like half open strings, which is awesome, right? That, that makes it a little easier. When you get into this G minor, there's, there's two ways that you can play it. Um, and 
the the main form it's going to end up being almost an entirely um uh um bar chord so so really when that that's why it gets a little bit difficult so the g minor it almost becomes a a three five five and then a three all the way down right now that can get really hard okay um so if you take your g and you kind of put two threes at the bottom, which which is a is another popular way to play G. If you can get this two down to a one, right? That's one way that people sometimes play it. Uh, and then another way, if you can do it, is actually a three, and then you block that A string. So you got three with your middle finger, block that A string. Then you have a zero, and then a three, and a three. And you block the bottom string. There's a lot of missing notes there. Right? But at least it's, it's coming through in the way that don't have to bar all the way across because that does get a little bit difficult but I've got if you guys check out YouTube I've got a ton of um, bar chord videos out there because the bar chords are a huge issue and, and 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 personally if you don't I think if you don't learn the bar chords correctly it'll like hang you up forever and you're just gonna keep fighting with 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 trying to squeeze all those strings out which is not very possible um yes wait uh, Gren, what did you uh, the sweeps, yeah, man. I mean, it depends what level you're at. Uh, and, and sweeping, sweeping is something that I'll do just as an exercise, right? Not really as like, uh, something that I, that I play very often, but, but one way that we teach them is taking like the, the minor form of a sweep, right? And so if I'm just doing like on the bottom three strings, like, uh, seven, six, five, Right? And, and, and kind of adding, so it's kind of like seven, six, seven, six, five, eight pulled off, and then back up again. Right? And, and, and what the sweep actually is, is going in the same direction. So really making sure you're not picking, you're not actually doing, right? You can see my hand is, those, those are three separate picks. That's your sweep. Now, to really perfect it, that's why using these three note patterns, or I guess, well, four note patterns, I'm sorry, just using the bottom three strings. Right, the reason that that works out so well is because you can, um, you can dive in to those details so easily. So check it out. You're going down. As soon as you go down, you go back up. So you'll never hit the same string in the same direction, right? It's just two straight downs. That's really easy, right? And then on your way back up, you're hitting that on the way up, that eight, and then pulling off, and then just hitting the same notes. Now, when you get down to this, so it's really just... Right, that's kind of like how, like a like a, a beginner way to do it. What's awesome about this is, the faster you get and the more detailed you get, you're gonna want to pop your fingers up a little bit, so only one note is playing at a time. So when you do the down, right, you kind of roll your fingers a little bit, right, where they're popping up to block the string to stop the note, but not pulling all the way up. Right, that's what gives those sweeps um, that that sound. You know what I mean? Is that it's not it's not notes overlaying. You know, and obviously this the, the, there's a very specific sound when it's like you know that distortion kind of uh, Joe Satriani uh, kind of an idea, but really getting it down where neither note blends into the next one. So yeah, so so start with that and go 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 slow so that you can get those details. Right. And then and then from there, once that becomes like just like a little natural to hear and feel out, 
Um, then you can move to some of the other ones, like... It's like, it's so hard on my acoustic. <laughs> um, and getting those, those full forms down. Um, and, and when you're learning them, what's funny about learning some stuff... If, 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 if I'm, I'm guessing because you're doing sweeping that you're, you're, you're playing metal. Um, what's funny about playing metal and learning is, um, like I have a student right now that we're working on some Avenged Sevenfold and Megadeth stuff. And what can happen when you're learning that is you can sort of put the distortion on and fudge your way through it, right? Whether it's the sweeps or not, uh, you can kind of like, you can sort of like... Right, fudge your way through by tremolo picking, where really you want to slow it down. Right, and make sure each pick is coming through. Uh, and then gradually speed that up. So if you're starting at a fast, um, if you're starting like a little too fast and every pick isn't coming through super clear, then it can, it can, it'll just present a problem. You won't be able to like move that faster, you know? Uh, and, and it's tempting. It really is tempting to just throw the distortion on and just kind of like, right, and like almost play the notes, but it's moving so fast that it feels like it, like it's it's correct. Um, so, but yeah, there's some there's some great Megadeth stuff and some great Avenged Sevenfold stuff. What I like about some of the sweeping too is, uh, and Avenged Sevenfold does this a little bit is they'll do, uh, they'll actually slow them down. So like they'll do like some some crazy fast you know, run. And then they will have like parts of their solos where like they're, they're both sweeping, but it is. Right, it is that speed, you know, and it's kind of like harmonized. But yeah, yeah, some, some cool stuff to check out. Um, anybody else? Uh, anybody else? I think I've got almost everything. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess I got to all the questions that I found. Unless somebody has has one last one. What's up? Um, thanks for joining, guys. Uh, and oh, if you guys didn't see, I I just I released uh, three songs or two songs. I'm sorry. I'm gonna like release two songs a month, um, and and one of them has has vocals and lyrics, and one of them is just uh, uh, instrumental. And these were from when I was uh, in Spain. So. It's got a little bit of that feel. Uh, and they're not out on Spotify and anything just yet. It's only on, um, it's only on Bandcamp. But for a dollar ninety-nine, dollar ninety-nine US, uh, you that would be such a huge help. You know, if I uh, if you guys ended up buying those and. Uh, I can do I can do more of these classes and more of these lives and uh, also I am still filming I will I'm, I'm still in the process of filming it's taken a long time uh, to get the scale uh, the scale tutorial where you're gonna be able to play over any progression make up your own progressions in any key using any scale you know um, if somebody says hey man I got this A minor to B minor you'll know all right man I'm gonna use a Dorian and B Phrygian and you're just gonna like riff away um, and, and if when you guys buy it it's gonna go into uh, it's all gonna be laid out on a private Facebook group so you guys can ask me questions so if there's something that's that's kind of difficult to get because it is a lot of information you guys can you'll be able to just kind of reply to the videos and say like hey I don't understand this this one part and I'll get back to you um, <laughs> Uh, Garvinder, yeah, I'm, I'm back, man. I'm going to be doing these every day. Uh, 9.15, although I was a little late today. I had to get set up. I had to get set up so you guys weren't facing the bright windows. So you could actually see me today. Um, yeah, how to sing with a guitar. This is, this is always a really good one. What I, I tell my students, you know, like, uh, if we, oh my God. She's kind of you know, if I was doing like some version of that, I think me and a student were working on like that acoustic version of, of, of Sweet Child of Mine. Right? And, and what gets difficult is that trying to keep like this, whatever, whatever the song is, you know, um, 
that strumming pattern while singing. She's got eyes of the bluest skies and if they thought of rain they didn't look into those eyes and see now it's vain. And you like start cramming like the you start like almost like she's got you know, like you're not you're not flowing through the guitar part and you're not flowing through the, the vocal part and you're trying to make them match up. Start with whatever whatever the song is, start with just the chord, right? So so in this case it's like She's got eyes of the bluest skies and thought of rain and look into those eyes see Right, so you're only hitting that first chord. And then from there, see if you can start hitting the first chord. So you have like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So now you're just hitting it on the downbeats and you're simplifying everything and then you're eventually, you know, um, you're eventually getting getting into the full thing. Practicing those separately. So that's a way to to practice like a little bit of the guitar while you're 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 getting the vocals down, right? So the lyrics and the vocals kind of um kind of become easier. And then go also go back and you know play those guitar parts. Make sure that those guitar parts are something that you can play. You wanna not have to think about any of it. You know, it's gotta be like so I mean when when you watch those guys play, um when you watch like whoever it is, anything from like Neil Young to like Kurt Cobain, whoever, um, they're not thinking, you know what I mean, about any, anything. They're, those guitar parts are just like, they could do them, no problem. They could sing it, no problem. So that when they put it together, they're not kind of thinking of one or the other. Um, and and it, it, it is together, you know what I mean? It's just, it's like, when you do that, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm playing the guitar and I'm singing at the same time. It just kind of becomes one, one thing. Um, so that's, yeah, that's like a pretty solid way to practice that. Um, don't, don't try to force what, what isn't working. So what I mean by that is if you're just, if you're trying to jump in with the actual full guitar part, you know, and the actual full vocal part, and it's like, ah, oh, you're just like hitting the wall and you can't get it, you can't get forward with that. Um, don't keep hitting that wall because then you're not gonna be getting any better. Break it up like that where you're just kind of hitting the one chord, you know, and singing over it and then slowly adding the strumming pattern and making it more complicated um, and, and, and to where it needs to be. And, and while practicing the guitar as, as the, the full part actually is. Um, so, what was that? Yeah, I mean, some of Nirvana stuff is actually pretty complicated to sing over. Um, but uh, picking some some easy stuff too is is always is always helpful. Something that's that's easy for you guys to do. Um, Sweet, so does anybody have any other questions? I'm gonna wrap up in a second. It looks like we got a, a, a few more people here. Um, oh wait, somebody put one in the in the thing. Between eight, yeah, dude. Okay, I'll see. Yeah, so somebody asked to, to switch. I didn't even realize that there was this this question cloud now. Um, switching between A and G, switching between any chord and any chord, really. But I'll but I'll I'll go through the A and G, um, and I'll go through both forms of them, because the way that I'll that the way that I play my A, is is I, I use my my first finger, and I cover the the fourth, third, and second string. And I kind of block out the bottom string. So that tends to make it a little easier. But when, when you're, or if you're doing it this way. What is happening when you're switching chords, it doesn't necessarily matter what chord, uh, what chord you're switching from. But when you're switching chords, uh, if I kind of call it like the, like the, um, 
cracks in the sidewalk almost, right? So it's like a nice smooth sidewalk and then a crack, and then a nice smooth sidewalk and a crack. And that's often what people do is they'll, they'll kind of have like, Right, that's not really gonna get you any faster, right? You you can play one you 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 can play one chord over and over and over and over as fast as you want. It's gonna sound nice, right? Until you have to switch. It's the switching that you want to do. So what I'll do is I'll just have somebody play one chord, right, and just find the sweet spot in there how fast you can go. Now chords are a little bit different. If I have somebody playing like a solo pattern, I'll have them play it as slow as they need to do to get it clean and then speed it up. Chords I go a little bit differently with students. I'll have them play so that it's nice and slow and perfect. Get it, they're getting the chord changes, and then I'll have them do it fast, but they're not allowed to stop. So what you don't want to do is fast, stop, switch chords. Stop, switch chords. You want to do it faster than, right? So now you've found your speed, where you're able to switch from one chord to another. So now, speed it up a little bit, but don't stop. So what I mean by that is you're gonna play the wrong chords, the wrong notes. Right? Which is totally fine at first, just because a, a big slow up for, for changing chords for us um, that everyone sort of does is this sort of like A, then they look, and then they switch and then they look down here, which I'm not really sure why people look down here. And then they look back over to double check and make sure, and then they look down and then they play it, right? Well, that is something that we gotta get rid of, right? And the only way that we're gonna get rid of that is to like be okay with playing the wrong chord. You know, just let it sound like that for a little bit. So do it, do it at that speed where you're not stopping, but you're kind of flubbing the chord up a little bit. And then also do it at the speed where you could make those changes perfectly. So that, any chord change, that, that is how to, how to kind of get those a little bit tighter. Um, yeah, strumming patterns, absolutely, Gravinder. Um, my, I mean, my favorite is just down, down, up, up, down. And when you're doing the strumming pattern, What's really happening is you, so I'm just on a, a D chord, I'm not gonna change chords. Um, what you're really doing is this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then you're just taking away some of those patterns. So this pattern is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If you look at my hands, right? I'm just not hitting on certain ones. And it's down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. Uh, what makes someone sound a little amateurish is when they'll do this. Right, it's very stiff, it doesn't flow because you're not sticking with, with a consistent rhythm of this down, up, right? You're just kind of like, instead of, so, so just practice that one. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. And you can take through all, you know, whatever changes you want to do. Um, I don't, I mean, that's like the main, just, I would say practice that a bunch. Um, and then, and then one thing that I'll do is I'll write them out. So you have like, I'll write arrows out, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So it's just down, up, three, four, so one, two, three, four, and, uh, and then just X out certain ones, right? So then you have like, you know, cause you're just Xing out the the strums that you're gonna gonna kind of bypass and miss but that down down up up down is like everywhere you know um let's see i got 
I'm going to wrap up, guys, in a second. Um, uh, let's see. Danushi Mohan. Um, let's see. Uh, any advice on switching between chords and soloing? I mean, not really. <laughs> uh, unless you, you know, just unless you're doing something where like you're playing for a measure and then soloing for a measure, you know, if you're kind of doing like a... But but uh, but going back and forth between chords and soloing is, is a little difficult, and it's it's an interesting style. I'd be interested to see what style it is that you're playing. I mean, Hendrix kind of did it a decent amount. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan would do it sometimes, you know. And then there's some acoustic guys that do it a little bit, like John Butler Trio. Um, but that's a, that's all style. Let me know what what style you're playing. Um, let's see. Harmonics notes. Uh, uh, Paranget. I may have pronounced that wrong, but where are the harmonic notes? There. Uh, every note technically is is a harmonic note. So think about if there's another way that you can ask that question. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, JC Real Steel officials. Yeah, man. Every every morning at nine thirty, I was I'm gonna make a little a little like post picture thing that says like all lives. You know, nine thirty a.m. Hopefully every day. Uh, the weekends. I would say the weekends might be tough, but I don't. Not now. Not now because I'm home. You know, I won't, I don't think I'll be going anywhere. Um, and then if I do end up going anywhere, I'll let you guys know. But yeah, I'm going to do like 9.15. It's pretty there. Um, uh, practicing picking. Yeah. Um, picking, I mean, uh, if, the, I mean, the best thing to start with picking too, if you're like trying to transfer from finger picking over into, into, um, into using a pick is starting like super light. You know, not, you know, which, which my guess is because you've already, you, you've already kind of established and you, you're kind of a finger picker. You, you would, you wouldn't overexert. Um, but yeah, starting that super light and I just do like a one, two, three, four here. It's almost like, it's just like a guitar warm up going super light and you can see like not going all the way down. You know, like, right? No reason for that. Um, uh, so that, yeah, that's my, and then whatever it is that you're playing, you know, like, uh, you know, trying to go like as light as you possibly can, not over picking, not getting too excited, uh, and just staying, staying super comfortable. Cause when you, when you can build, when you can play that lightly and that relaxed, you can build from there. If you're starting here, you can't really go down, and then that's where you kind of tense up and, and, and get a little jumbled up. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, all, yeah, and you should make sure that you are doing an alternate pick. Um, it should it should always be, it, I mean, there's not, there, there's not always gonna be a pattern, let's see. Kind of do two ups there. Kind of depending. It's the patterns aren't always. No, no, no. That's fine. Don't don't worry about it, man. Um, you don't have to apologize. The, the yeah. If you're doing something like this, down up, down up. You know what I mean to get that. To get that idea. Um, that those exercises, you know. Uh, but but when you when you move into even if something is in that rhythm. You know what I mean? Even if it's like da 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 doesn't always necessarily mean that you're gonna down up, down up the whole time because it it just like the way the guitar is set up, it might make sense to do two up picks or two down picks, you know, together. Um, but just ha just having that comfort of being able to change in and out, you know. Um, because I mean what what is funny is like I don't even I didn't I didn't even know I don't even know what I'm doing there. I know that I'm not doing all the same. Right, all downs and stuff like that. I know, I know that, but I, I, you, you sort of forget about it, because um, you just end up doing what's what's easiest. So you, when you kind of have that that ability to do all the alternate picking, you know, you can kind of, um, you got to just like move in and out of it. Um, so good, good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad to help. Um, K 
any left hand practice exercises? Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you are doing these, one, two, three, fours, I mean, there, there's like, it's so funny. There's like no crazy exercises necessarily, right? They're all, they're all sort of based around that. Um, I like this one. I'll do one, four, two, three. So first finger, pinky, second finger, third finger. Right, just like that. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Um, and then going down, but this way. Right? And then going up, this way. That's just like another another great exercise. But I mean, doing doing a bunch of those, like you'll get, that's that's sufficient, you know, sufficient enough. There's there's no, you don't really need to do any any crazy exercises, I don't think. Um, one, one that I'll do every now and then is, I'll go down here and I'll do like nine, 10, 11, 12, like kind of across the strings. And then I'll switch my two middle fingers and then the two fingers on the edge and the two middles and then back again. Ah, Cause it's like really hard for me to do. <laughs> I obviously need to do this exercise way more. Uh, and any exercise that you're doing, I'm making that face right? Because it's like hard for me to make that move. But what I'm not doing is like overexerting and squeezing. You know what I mean? Like, ah, uh, so whenever you're doing these, make sure that you are really relaxed, even when they're difficult, you know, um, and you're not, you're not trying to, trying to squeeze the hell out of it. Um, cool, man. I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that these are working. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up guys. It's almost 10. Uh, and I got to get to some private students. Uh, so every day, 9 15 ish, I might be late. I might be a little early some days. Um, so you guys can get your questions ready, uh, and, and, and tune on in and, uh, and yeah, man, that'll be it. I'm glad that you guys jumped on, uh, and send me DMS guys. If there's something that I didn't get to, if I have, if I have time during the day, I can, can always kind of do a video and reply. So cool. Thank you guys. I love you. You guys are awesome.